Good morning and welcome to another beautiful day. It's going to be a hot one today by the look of it, so we're getting into this early. This is my old sawmill. I designed and built this several years ago, and today we need to pull it out and give it a little bit of a fix up and uh, cut a bit of timber. I'll give it a good uh, clean today, good pressure wash, good greasing, everything moves, put some grease on it, uh, check the oil, clean the air filter, basic maintenance um, before we start cutting. I'll give you a quick rundown of how it all works. It's obviously a bandsaw mill, it runs a bandsaw, band, a, a blade, bandsaw blade which is five and a half metres long. I'm running about one TPI with the teeth. Now this handle here is for our height. Every tooth on that sprocket equals one millimetre of lift or fall on the actual blade itself. And that works by going up through these other chains and sprockets up to the top here. Uh, coming back down and connecting onto the main frame. Now I have these counterweights which are here and same on the other side. They're both uh, 54 kilos of lead in each. That counteracts the weight of the motor blade etc there is otherwise uh, sort of exceptionally hard to lift. So with those counterweights, the counterweights could even be a slightly, slightly heavier than they are, but um, it's manageable by turning this handle to lift this up and down to um, get the heights you want. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, that is a boat winch there, which I just run that um, rope to the other end of the frame to um, pull it along through the wood. <clears throat> Now, little twin cylinder motor, um, they say it's 20 horsepower, but they're obviously uh, very small horses, I'd say probably 10. Uh, centrifugal clutch going onto a jack shaft, spring loaded jockey wheel is here to <clears throat> keep tension on the um, pulley and the belts. Um, which goes through to the main drive, drive shaft there, it's under that cover. Um, and then obviously uh, around the other wheel at the other end over your guide, guide wheels which uh, keeps it level in your cut and stops it moving backwards um, a fuel tanks mounted up top there that drum which is gravity fed um, that's about it, I guess. A quick rundown. Now this is our uh, lifting and lowering device. So each tooth is one mil, and you up and down, you go down, and up. Fifty-five teeth equals fifty-five mil in lift and fall. Nine quarters in the old scale for uh, timber, timber cutting. Uh, boat winch, um, yeah, I'll hook that up now just to show you. Okay, the boat winch, just by winding the handle, it moves the entire mill along, like so. The good thing with the boat winch is you've got three different speeds. I just use the middle one, it seems to be uh, most effective. And just take the handle off, drop it in there. I can pull the whole machine backwards. Well, I'm not going to start it, so to speak, but just need to see if it's got any power in the battery. Excellent. Still got power in the battery. <clears throat> 
Alright. I guess I'll get the old blade off. And I might have just bring the pressure washer up, I think, and give it a good clean. Okay, it's just had a bath, all nice and clean now, well, relatively. I'll uh, take the old blade off. Okay, what we'll do is undo this bolt, take some tension out of the blade. So, maybe not sharp today, it's probably a bit stuck. Normally just give that a bit of a push. that old farmer saying if in doubt give it a clout bigger the doubt bigger the clout and we can just pop that blade off there yeah blade out Bit of a trick to fold in these uh, five and a half long meter razor blades up. That's uh, the way I do it. Hold the teeth up, your thumbs on the top of your teeth, roll your thumbs inwards, twisting the blade, and uh, there we have it. Uh, it's a bit hard to explain, you just sort of do it. Took me a while to learn it too. And We've got the new blade sitting on there. I've just got to uh, tighten it up. And as you tighten it, just need to, just got to take the clamp off the other end. As you tighten it, just need to turn it so it runs where it's going to, so it sits where it's going to run which should be, these teeth should be just hanging over the edge of the uh, wheels. Now, this blade is a tungsten tip blade, which is uh, hopefully going to perform a lot better than the last blades I was using. Uh, last blades were just standard run-of-the-mill uh, bicarbon steel blades. Now, the difference is, the bicarbon steel blades or, or ordinary blades have got tooth set, meaning that every third tooth is on one side and every other third is on the other side and one third of them straight. So it's straight, left, right, straight, left, right, straight, left, right, straight. And if you hit something hard, sometimes even just a really, really hard knot, you can... Uh, Offset, you can knock that set out of the blade, and then the blade will take a nose dive and cut uh, waves instead of planks, and yeah, not good. So the difference with the tungsten is that there's no set because the tungsten tooth is actually just wider than the blade, than the body of the blade. Oh, that was it. That... And then um, so that cuts enough kerf for the blade to 
fit through. So if it was not there, I mean, you'd only go so far and it would jam up on the actual blade. That's why they have set. But uh, these blades, no set. So I'm keen to see how it travels. Well, that's on. Tightened up. Now, I just use a tension wrench to bring uh, the blade to the same tension uh, every time. And once I've run it for <coughs> two or three cuts, even just one cut, it, just double check it, make sure it hasn't moved, uh, and then you're pretty well right for the rest of the day. Just coming in with a tractor to pick up all the old sawdust, and it's pretty well rotted down, it's been there for 12 months or more. And um, yeah, I take it down the veggie garden and dump it. I just got a little bit more on uh, this side over here to do. Then we get a log on and start the one. That's the log sitting on the mill. Now, what I'm trying to achieve is I need two pieces of timber, which will be approximately 200 mil square or bigger, depending on what I can get. I only need them a metre long. Now, this particular log is a bit bent. And the time I mill that down, I'm not going to get me 200 out of it. So I'm just going to lop the end off this. Just cut the fat end, and I've got another short log about a bit over a metre long, um, which I'll also get another piece out of what I want. So that way I might be able to get a moving up to 250 mil square, hopefully. Anyway, see how we go.
a very interesting uh, knot in the middle of that. The branch is actually broken off pretty straight and it's growing right over around it. That's why we've got that straight line there. Beautiful temper. It's a uh, red box. Again, cut it again, so on and so on. Then we have a square camp for what I want. Now, it doesn't matter if I get a bit of live edge, so to speak, on some of it because um, that won't matter. What it's for is to go underneath a uh, Bridgeport mill, or well, it's not actually a Bridgeport, but a big milling machine, uh, which I'm presently rebuilding. Just it's for me, I'm reasonably tall. Um, milling machines generally the tables are just too low for me so I'm just going to prop it up yeah about 200 mil and bring it to a what I call a reasonable height anyway bear with me and I'll turn it over all right this is going to give me a 220 mil square
cutting straight, smooth, very nice finish on it. This, this hardwood normally, you've really got to push the blade to get through it, but this stuff just going through like butter. Oh, wow. That is just perfect. That's just cutting exactly how it should. That's just just nice. Don't know what I use these boards for, but too good to throw away. Stick them in the shed, dry them out. Never know, might make something out of it. But that's our finished log for today on that one. I've got another one there, the same, which I'll cut. Uh, now, I do it off camera because it's just, it's amazing how much time filming takes. Like, it's taking four times longer to cut that than what it normally would. Anyway, I'll chop the other one and uh, next time you'll see those will be in the shed.